All right, everybody. Sorry for the delay. We're live, pal. Now, for those of you watching on the video feed, you'll see a little bit of a different setup for us. Uh, our producer has a day off, so he is uh, he is not here. I have to do this by myself. And, you know, when I have to do it by myself, it's not going to be the best, but at least we can still record. So, Andrew Zarian, what is going on? How are you? It is WrestleMania week. Does it feel like WrestleMania week? It actually does feel WrestleMania week after last night's uh, angle with The Rock and Cody. Dude, I, and, and two Roman. weeks in a row, dude. I, yeah. I've watched all of Raw live, like in its entirety. Uh, no exhaustion. You know, what? did they have great phenomenal matches on that show? Not really, but you know what? They told a, a fantastic story from beginning to end. So let, we're going to get into some WrestleMania stuff. Now, originally... Yeah. My idea for this show was we were going to bring on uh, Cameron Hawkins from he, he's written for The Ringer. He writes for Sean. There's uh, he's got his own podcast stuff. Unfortunately, I think he is traveling to Philadelphia in a car right now. So I told him that maybe we'll have him on next week so he could give us the lay of the land of how yeah. Philadelphia was. Uh, and instead, you know, it's just going to be me and you. But I wanted to mention there's a great piece out by Billboard, Billboard.com, about Wale Mania. And I tell everybody, when it comes to this stuff, uh, when it comes to WrestleMania weekend, Wale Mania is my favorite event. And I'm always bummed out when I can't go now. My wife's birthday being on WrestleMania weekend usually means that it's probably not in my best interest to go to WrestleMania weekend anymore. <laughs> but yeah. that was my favorite event. And I went to four of these things. So... Um, there's a great piece out there. Check it out. Read it. it. It sort of describes the origin story of it. But it reminded me of a story. I don't know if I've even told you this story before. So Wally Mania 2015. I, I believe this was the first one. It is, uh, it is in Santa Clara. So obviously really close to me. This is the At, one that Dave went to, right? This is the one that Dave went oh, to. Oh, yeah. Nice. And there's a great photo with Dave Meltzer, Court Bauer, and Wale in the same photo. Um, and so I, in reading this piece that, uh, that Kazim, Kazim was, uh, is Kazim and Wale together are kind of behind the whole thing. A uh, court Bauer, I think helped with the promoting or something because that's why I was involved. Yeah. And, and so reading that piece, I was reminded of this story, which is Ray Mysterio, uh, was going to the event and he was late like the, the like the you know it's on the airplane flies in who's picking up ray like there's this chaos and i was almost the person who was gonna pick up <laughs> ray mysterio <laughs> that's great and so i had totally forgot about that but in reading the piece on wally mania uh they they mentioned that story i was like oh yeah i was at some point i was gonna go now um there's a there's a couple other stories i'll quickly tell and then we'll get to our mania stuff so, uh, my buddy, uh, my buddy, AKA the dames, he wanted a photo with, uh, Mick Foley's daughter, Noel. And I don't, I don't know if you've been, I, I mean, they're from near you. So I'm assuming you've seen them out and about before Yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah. I've met, I met Noel like a few times at like the Brooklyn shows or at the garden, you know, she's always around if it's like a local show and she's in town, she's always there. And so, uh, dames wants to get a photo with noel so you know we tap noel on the shoulder hey can you know we, we get a photo with you she's like sure she's really nice she turns around and all of a sudden who must have some like sixth sense none other than frank the clown right. he's like oh some dude wants to take a photo with noel i'm gonna jump into this photo so he just like jumps into the photo and I do this thing with my buddy's camera where I go from framing it. I'm framing it. Nick, uh, Frank the Clown comes in and my frame goes like this. <laughs> and I eliminate him completely from the photo. Was he in like full gimmick or was he like a normal yes, man? He was okay. in full gimmick. Yeah, he full gimmick. Com complete and full gimmick. That must have been uh, fun for her, for Noel, <laughs> to go out with, with her clown. Yeah. Uh, but it was wild. Like there's, I just have this v real memory. So they kind of tapered off this area where uh, the wrestlers and the media were kind of hanging out. And uh, the first time I saw Carlito 
like the buff version of Carlito. I was Super like, Jack Carlito. Geez, this dude is jacked. And I just remember vividly, like music is blasting, Wale is doing his concert, and Dave Meltzer and Chris Hero are trying to just talk wrestling above all of the noise. <laughs> and Wale like, Mania. <laughs> as close to each other as you can possibly get so that they could hear each other speak. But yeah, oh Wale Mania, God. Wale Mania is a blast. Um and uh, you should go if you have a chance, but I think it also sells out pretty quickly. So uh, that 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 may not be as easy, but hopefully we can get Cam Cameron on next week and he can tell us all the stuff that is happening uh, that or that is happening this weekend. And he can let us know what was uh, what was the good stuff. All right. Before we get to the WrestleMania thing, one more thing. Did you hear this clash at the castle thing is in oh, I Scotland? Thought, I thought I thought you were going to go into on uh, Tony Khan's attack on the sweetest man ever, John Alba. I thought that's what you were going to talk about. Well, you heard me. Me- you heard. I don't know if you heard me mention that on Wrestling Observer Radio. No, did you? Did you mention it? Yeah, I, I was just like, why would Tony reply to John's tweet to diss Bischoff for? I and know, I know. You know, and I know if John's involved, that show is not going to be a bad show because John's a great host. So, and John has credibility, whereas, you know, Bischoff, maybe not so, so much. So listen, I, I went on the show. Okay. I did. Okay. I did that show with, with John and Bischoff. All right. I had a great time. Eric was nothing but a tremendous host. Uh, I, you know, he obviously has his issues with Dave and he has his issues with Tony. Uh, and quite obviously both of them have issues with Eric. He, I, he I has his issues with the truth, which is the real problem. He, whatever. Yeah. You know, I, There's a lot that he's correct on, tremendously, a ton of it. But there's also a lot that I don't agree that he's right on. But that's fine. That And John did, and John's job on that show was to be that voice to tell Eric, like, hey, Eric, listen, one specific one uh, I remember, I don't remember the exact conversation, but John was defending talent. And he was saying, you know, we want talent to make money, and that's yep. why it's good for us to support right. AEW and for right. AEW to exist. And Eric was coming off like, it's not about the town. It's about the company. It's about making money. You know, two very different philosophies. John has a very different thought process than Eric. And Eric is a corporate guy that thinks about the bottom line in the business end. And, and forget about the rest. Okay. I well, okay. thought it can was I inter- a captivating can I conversation. You? Yeah, can yeah. I interrupt you right yeah. then and there? Okay. If Tony Khan was losing hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah. Eric has a point. Of course. Yeah. When Tony Khan is not losing hundreds of millions of dollars to the point of where the company goes bankrupt or they're they're you know getting pushed off of television, then I don't think Eric Eric has a valid point because what is he arguing? He's arguing that oh you need to look at the company's bottom line and you can't take care of the wrestlers and this and that and it's like no you can actually do both. You can do both. Yeah. Listen, I I found their conversations to be really interesting. Uh, partially because I really like John. I consider him a good friend. Uh, I I talk to him off air, and I and I love to see his career expand and grow. So for me, it it it's I get a kick out of seeing my friends in successful positions. Yeah. I, the same goes for Will Washington and getting getting that gig with AEW. Absolutely. I will champion you. I will support you. I love to see people starting from nothing, right? And both of those guys in are wrestling. not yes. in wrestling, right? Not celebrities, not married into something. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Will's situation is a little bit different, but I think for Will, it was truly 100% based on his abilities and not nepotism in any capacity. Same Connection, goes for, man. Listen, and same goes for John. And John is a hustler and he works hard. And he's here in New York. He's on SNY uh, at late night at 11 o'clock here in New York. It's great to see my friends in successful positions. But, you know, and Tony knows John, and Tony knows what type of person John is. Uh, I thought it was it was unfair. You know, 4 a.m. tweet attacking John's post, and John has to eat the shit now that everybody's commenting on, hundreds oh, yeah. of comments against him. I didn't think it was fair. But I, I did want to say, you know, I it is a very, you know, it's WrestleMania week, but between that attack on John and the punk conversation, from yesterday, which I know you you're both going to. I don't want to. I don't want to. It. I don't want to derail you. Do it. But I I did want to bring up John because he's in the chat room while we're doing this, and it it came fresh on my mind. I thought it was a little unfair, a little unfair of attack for John because John was not just a you know a layman just nodding and saying yes yes you're right Eric. He was 
not combative, but they were having a a healthy discussion. And yeah, that was every show. I mean, it's Tony taking a shot at Bischoff while yeah. not understanding that this also means one less payday for Alba not having this show. Now, yeah. John's going to do something else and he'll, and, and, you know, and, and do and, great and at it, whatever it is. Time to do it. But that's the part where I was like, okay, Tony, you probably need to think this one through a little bit. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're doing, we're not doing content. In some instances, we're doing content because we enjoy it. Like you and I, like, you know, we, we do this show mostly because we enjoy each other's company, but some people are doing the content because it is, you know, helping with their, uh, with their earnings. And, and if that is the case, then I don't think he should be celebrating in anybody's, you know, loss of a show or whatever, yeah. even if, even if it was directed at Bischoff, like yeah, he should have thought that I, one I get, I get Tony's beef with Eric. Totally. I would feel the same exact way if that was me. Uh, but you know, he also likes, I know that he likes John. I know that he doesn't have a problem with John. I, I just think that it was a very mixed, uh, way to take a dig at Eric. That was yeah. it. Yeah. Listen, and, and you know what? It happens. And, and I, I just felt that it was, it, I felt bad for John that he was caught in that crossfire. Yep. I very much understand. Uh, I, I know our own Josh Nason was caught in the Tony Khan uh, tweet crossfire before. And I was like, man, John, Josh didn't do anything to deserve yeah. this. <laughs> you know, the way that that morning when I saw it, I was like, wow. So John actually texted me early in the morning mm -hmm. and he wrote something along the lines of gotten yelled at by any billionaires recently <laughs> uh, this uh, this today or whatever it was. I said, not this week. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I mean, last week, probably, but not this week. Uh, see, this is why I like doing this show with you, because we often talk about the media stuff and it hadn't crossed my mind because I had talked about it with Dave last week. But, you know, Dave didn't really go in, in, into it in, as in depthly as we just did right now. But uh, so so thank you for bringing that up, because it was something that I wanted to talk to you about. I just completely forgot because it is WrestleMania weekend. Uh, OK, this Clash of the Castle thing. So. Yeah. Clash of the Castle being announced for whatever, like that, that, that there's no real news there for us, but it's in Scotland, correct? It is in Scotland. And who is their biggest star with Scottish heritage? Oh, uh, uh, my, my namesake, Drew McIntyre. So he's, this dude's gotta be signed, right? Or at least like, I, Verbal why would he not why would he not want to sign <laughs> right. you know i i just find it fascinating because he's gonna be the big i mean you know the the wwe is global and worldwide but he's the homegrown star going home to scotland this got to be tremendous for him this has got to be like everything that happened the first time when he when he lost that match to roman a couple years back yeah. they're gonna have to rewrite it for this one because this has to be like the the biggest thing for for drew mcintyre's career in this show yeah i mean it's his show right it's the moment for him and wh where where are they doing it they're doing it at uh the hydro it, it's in an arena at yeah, least as far it, as it's Dave not that large I, no. I think from what i remember it's like for i think that it's like between 12 and fourteen thousand. so I, I mean listen is 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 it him and punk in the main for that is that what you do yeah, I, you know what? You know what I like about this as well because now the the people or the fans who believe that AEW had a shot at Drew and and maybe they did have a shot previous to you know the the last four or five months or whatever. But one of the things that people would bring up is you know we have this Wembley show like Drew McIntyre. I'm sure would love to be in this Wembley show, and WWE just like well we have this other show too that we can just you know, yeah. coronate him as, as a giant, as the giant star uh, of the, you know, of the show. So I find that whole thing uh, pretty fascinating, but all right, let's talk about Russell mania. Now give me your thoughts on last night's angle where it was Seth against solo bloodline rules. Jay and Jimmy come out. The rock comes up. The rock just throws Jay Uso around like he's a rag doll. And then the rock comes out. Roman comes out as the rock is about to go through the table 
and Rock and Roman, they beat the the dog oh my excrement God. out of Cody and Seth, whipping them constantly with this belt. And I, I know there's a way to do that belt thing, like when you hit the ground and maybe it doesn't really hit the guy, but there were moments where they were not hitting the ground with the belt and they were just whipping these dudes. It was insanity. What did you think about the whole thing? I thought it was great. I thought it was an unbelievable. Uh, uh, I, listen, I there there are different types of wrestling that people like. Uh, I think most people know the type of wrestling I'm into. But when you have a good angle, you really don't need to do much in ring. Uh, fantastic, you know. Dwayne's great. Everybody in their role is fantastic. The bloodline looks like a million bucks. That opening segment, I, I really liked. Uh, they did a great job at teasing. Uh, that you may see The Rock and Seth Rollins in a match, which I didn't even consider that for the future. But I mean, listen, I I, I think it's I think it's fascinating for sure. I I they've really changed the direction of this company, and it's refreshing. I'm watching a three hour show. I've great, even if it's an AEW show with great matches, even if the pay per view uh, for WWE with great matches, it, it's long, you know. Three hours is long, especially on a Monday. I was able to get through that show with no problems. I thought it was uh, I thought it was fantastic. There's one thing. Now, this is just this is stuff that I pay attention to and maybe not a lot of people pay attention to. But I was like, man, I wish we had prime version of Jim Ross calling this thing. Because Cole went silent for the most part. And McAfee, now here's where McAfee as an announcer, his credibility is is kind of, you know, shaken in moments like this because he's such a goofball. Now you have a really serious wrestling moment. Yeah. And his oohs and ahs almost sound comedic. If we had J Jim Ross talking about they're beating Cody like a rented mule and a government, government, uh, yeah, government mule, right? And screaming. You know, where, where, where's the administration? Like, who's coming out here to, you know, why is the bloodline yeah. allowed to, to, to just beat up? You know, we needed that in that angle. And I think it would have been an all timer. But Cole, I don't know what Cole was even doing. He was like maybe trying to just let the crowd take over or something. Like, he didn't hype it far enough to be like that all time moment for me. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was, listen, for, for, for what they were doing a year ago. What they were doing eight months ago, six months ago, and what they're doing today, the, it, it, it was so refreshing to see. It's different. It's a very different approach. The, the adultness has been brought back. You know, they, and this is all, I mean, they, they know exactly what they're doing. And, and, you know, have you noticed how much they're censoring now, right? <laughs> not just The Rock, and it's not just Dwayne. It's other segments too. It's with Punk, it's with whoever else. That is by design. It's not for the pop for the moment. It's to tell you, guys, we're going to Netflix. This is on the internet now. It's not on television. It's not linear. We're going to be able to do a little bit more stuff there. And they're doing a good job at making people think that they are going to be TV, whether or not they are TV 14 or whatever they're going to be. They're doing a great job at telling you, you the audience, this edge that you're seeing is something that's going to continue when we leave here. So... I think just very, very smart decision making on their behalf. OK, here's a question for you. Have you heard that Netflix is going to allow that? Because we had Dave on and Dave said he was going to look into it. And when I asked him again, he said it's sort of undecided at this point. Uh, in what sense? As far as Netflix changing the rating. Oh, no, no, no. 100 percent. Dave is right. It is undecided right now, but they are. They are. It's it's. The conversation is happening. I yeah, can tell I you so. that. that. Like, it is, it is. But this was a prime thing that they wanted to do two years ago when I reported that story that blew up. Mm -hmm. They, you know, I'm not going to say who I sat down with. I, you know the story. But I went yeah. to dinner with key people there. And they were like, you are 100% correct. And it was just USA jumped the gun on this story. But this is something that we want to do. Not so much that we bring back the blood and the violence and the cursing, which they have. <laughs> shockingly but it's 
it's more to allow them to not have that issue that they have on Fox, where every second that crowd is chanting, holy S or whatever, <laughs> they're, they're dumping it out. You know, yeah, the one no, I, it's but, terrible audio for it's, sure. It's terrible. It's terrible. But that's not by design. That's aggravation for them when they do that on SmackDown. But everything that you're seeing on Raw with the censoring, it is all by design. It is made that way to, to keep the intrigue up Listen, think about it this way, right? When you were when you were 13, 14 years old, because that is the core audience that this company has built the last eight months. I have not I, I'm all these years, dude, in covering wrestling. I haven't had this many like of the kids in my family excited about wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously they know Roman Reigns, John Cena, they're into it a little bit, but now all the kids are hyped. The girls are into it. The guys are like you know, I have a big family and seeing their reaction tells me everything I need to know. They're yep. creating a, a that 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 intrigue that was created in 1996, 1997, 1998 with, you know, I'm a little younger than you with my generation. It's starting again. I'm not saying go all the way. <laughs> I don't we're not going to see brawn panty matches. We're not going to see, you know, life sacrifice. Maybe we will see the life sacrifices. I don't know. It's Netflix. You know, they could do a Stranger Things crossover. It could get wacky. But I, 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 when I, when I saw it, so I spoke to, you know, I, I sent a text message. I'm like, is this by what you guys are doing? He goes, yep. It's to create the, the, what if, what if this happens on Netflix? Brilliant. Great. Love it. You know what I would like to see on Netflix? But the thing is, is they're going to be on USA with the other show. So unless they change the rating for SmackDown in, uh, in October, uh, we may see some of the similar things, but I would like to see on Netflix just the freedom to go there when they have something that necessitates it, right? Because with The Rock and like, yeah, sure, that necessi necessitates it. But do you do you know what my fear is, is for CM Punk to come out and just start dropping F-bombs for the sake of F-bombs and it not really being a reason to go edgier. It's just because they can. I would like to see the freedom, but I would like to see them have a lot of discipline in only going there when they need to go there. Yeah. I mean, when you need to do it, when you need to do it, it's fine. You know, overuse, it doesn't go anywhere. It just be, you become numb to it. Um, listen, this is when WWE's hot and they're firing on all cylinders. It is bad for everybody. Everybody else is doomed. Just how it is. So, and that's a second CM Punk tease. We, and we are going to get to that, the yeah. Ariel Hawani stuff. But before uh, before we get there, uh, I want to go over these matches for WrestleMania. We won't go over all of them, but I want to go over the big ones. And I want to get your, your temperature gauge on your feeling going into this match. Uh, give me, it's a hot match, it's a cold match, uh, or it's kind yeah. of in the middle. It's a lukewarm match. And let's okay. start with Becky and Rhea. Where are you with with your anticipation for this one? I, I'm I, I I love Rhea. I don't think I think the build with Becky has been weird. Yes, I I kind of agree with that. I I don't know why. I and I don't know like, just I I feel like Becky's not as into it. <laughs> that that's an interesting one because I feel the same way. But when I talk to other folks who really, really enjoy her, they don't seem to think that there's anything changed about her character. Now, from 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 where I sit, it feels like Rhea has become what Becky was previously. And Becky may have may have taken a, a step down from being the top woman on on the raw brand. I, I feel like Rhea is kind of humming on all cylinders and Becky is a little. She's she's not her promos are not as whip smart as they used to be. She used to have these yeah. fantastic one liners. She's standing up against everybody. And it, it does feel like a step down from that. And for that reason, to me, I was going to say lukewarm. I'm kind of lukewarm on this one, even though I was yeah. super excited when the build happened. Yeah, I would say lukewarm for sure. OK, next one. Gunther. And Sammy, they went straight up Rocky three with us last night with Chad Gable and yeah. Sammy Zayn. 
Chad Gable. Now, let me tell you about this Chad Gable guy and just the actor that he is. He played Apollo Creed and Adrian in the same segment, in the same segment of trying to get Sami Zayn fired up and into it. He he played both characters. What range that Chad Gable has. Where are you with uh, Sammy and Gunther? Um, I, I, I'm into this for sure. I, I had cooled off on it a little bit. Um, only because I don't want to see Gunther lose, but I also hate seeing Sammy lose. That's that is your conundrum right there. I think that is the focus. That is what they need to start building. Is you know Gunther's unbeatable, but nobody wants Sammy to lose, and maybe yeah. that's kind of where they're going. But I think that's a fascinating aspect. Or hey, maybe maybe Gunther will lose. You know, and and they they come up with a nice program with that. I I both are tremendous. You know, and and I like both of their work. Uh, I think for Sammy, he he was at the peak of his career a year ago, and uh, you can't compare it. You know what the 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 program he was in last year versus this year, he kind of got lost after that. The tag stuff didn't really do much for me, um, but I, I'm excited for this. This is a this is a thumbs up. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I'm there. It, there, it's. It's not a full 100% thumbs up because I thought that they should have been doing this stuff with Sammy weeks ago. Like, it's almost like they decided at the last minute they yeah, were going to go forward it. with it. And, and it feels rushed. But, uh, uh, you know, Gunther and Sammy are going to have a fantastic match. Could be a night one show stealer if they give it time. All right. I'm going to skip through some of these other matches. But um, Jay versus Jimmy. I you know, feel I feel like last year had they done this match. It would have been hotter than it is right now. I don't think they built it right. I, I think what ended up happening is that, that that bloodline focus became so heavy on The Rock and on Cody. Even Roman took a little bit of a backseat here. So everybody was affected by it. I, I think that's the bigger story here is how it just got overpowered by a better program. Yeah, I agree. I also don't know if I need to see these guys fight what are what what are the stakes in this match just Nothing. who's the better brother yeah who's the better brother hmm uh, i don't know you know yeah by the way did you see the roman reigns a e documentary i haven't seen it yet i i'm, I'm not finished okay but, how was it uh it's 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 interesting i mean there's footage that we would have never seen otherwise there's like footage of all three of them as kids and you can see the twins together as like nine-year-olds it's actually oh, it's actually kind of cool but like i see that a and e doc and it's like oh i want to see the usos together i don't want to see them apart like what the hell are we doing so i'm 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 kind of cold on this one where are you with this one uh half half and half i i think they're gonna have a tremendous match so it keeps me more intrigued in it but I, I think the bill got just overpowered by all the other stuff going on in that company. All right. Jade Cargill showed up on SmackDown. Bianca Belair, who seems to be, eh, she's probably above this feud for a WrestleMania match, but she was kind of the person, you know, the star without a big match. It's Bianca and Jade and Naomi against Damage Control. Dakota... Asuka and uh, Kyrie Sane. I think adding Jade Cargill to this match changes the dynamic from sort of cold to at least lukewarm and, and a little bit more bubbling. Because yeah. I just want to see Jade. I just want to see what she's going to do. You know, it's also WrestleMania. You want to get everybody on the card, right? That's the other thing here. So, you know, you got two nights. You got, you know, whatever amount of matches each night. Uh, you want to kind of get people. This is what everybody works to. to. And I think for to keep Bianca off. Or, you know, off it because she didn't have a program would be ridiculous. I, I think adding Jay changed everything. I'm, I'm intrigued into it now. The mm -hmm. program, not it's cold. It, yeah. it doesn't really mean much. But to have Jade there, it's going to build to what's next. And I think that's good. That's healthy for them. Yeah, I agree. And we'll, we'll skip the, uh, the tag match, the uh, Latino World Order tag match. And we'll go straight to the bloodline versus Cody and Seth. Now, I'm going to say this because... You you on this show have mentioned that you've been down on this match being the focal point of of the weekend. Can I can I go backwards for a second? There's yeah. another match that I'm really intrigued in. Oh, and I it was a last that. minute thing. Uh, um, AJ Styles and uh, LA Knight. Okay, that's a night two. We'll get to oh, night, night two. two. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll We're only tonight. doing night one. Okay. 
I, I thought it was night one. It's not night one. I, you know what? It could be. I'm looking at Wikipedia. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, you know, Wikipedia. I know a lot of people don't trust Wikipedia. I like Wikipedia, but it, it they could have flipped stuff, and they may still flip stuff okay. until uh, All you know, right. the weekend. Yeah, because there's only six matches right now for night night two. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe you're right. Okay, sorry. Let's go to the main. Yeah, where are you now? You've had I, a few weeks to to let I, it marinate. Okay, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna say I am I'm very into this match. Okay. I do I st I still believe what I would have wanted to see in a perfect world was the Rock and Roman. We're gonna get that eventually. Yeah. But and that was but they listen. It's not about me, right? It's about creating more programs they extended that match by another year maybe so they have a mega main event next year if it happens and they're still hot like this it's going to be even bigger you know it was a convoluted way to do it punk had to get hurt in order for this match to happen uh cody had to come out of the picture and go back into the picture for this match to happen there were a lot of moving parts but they did tremendous with it i mean from that initial moment where the rock whispered in cody's ear whatever he said and Cody gave up that spot to that. I guess that what was that? It was a it was a scrum. What would you call it? <laughs> the press conference. That crazy press conference that they had. From from what, that. What about Tony Khan just changing the whole meaning of scrum? Scr to, I know he redefined what it's it means. Like it's like it's a press conference, and I have people in my real life calling it scrums. I'm like, it's not a scrum. Yeah. You guys know what a scrum is? Okay, go ahead. Sorry, that's just my I, own beef with it. From from that press conference to today, they have done a total 180 for me. Yep. And I think it has more to do with the fact of of what a what a strong performer Dwayne is. Uh, I mean, he really that final ball shit is working. <laughs> it's really working because he is. <laughs> he is the final this boss. man. This man is from the, that is that is who we are all going to look like in two thousand years. We're all going to be the Rock's cousin. All of us. It's a, it's a, it's the future of humanity. We're seeing. He really is the final. I mean, he's so big. He's so he's big. A giant. He's gigantic and and perfectly tan and and I mean, just he looks incredible. And to have him out there, it really did. It changed my entire and that performance that he's put on and, and this this new character of his. It's so well done. Um, and listen, and I was someone that was not for it, right? I didn't really, I was, eh, it's great. It's fantastic. This is the great thing about wrestling. Things get hot and then they cool off and they get hot again and they do something really awesome. It, it's great to see that that exists. Mm -hmm. And for someone that loves professional wrestling, because it is an art, it's not just having a match. It's an art form to be able to, you know, have the rock out there at 50 years old and, you know, creating this tremendous opportunity for so much talent on that card to be in front of even more people and more fans are into you. They're buying your merch because they're going to these shows. Uh, it's such an asset for them. Uh, I, I'm now my big question is how the hell do they do this on Saturday and Sunday? How do they whatever they're doing? How, what do they do? Oh, meaning who wins and all that stuff? how they win who gets involved is yeah. austin coming out because i i mean it's it's pretty i mean to me it's pretty <laughs> no, clear that'd be awesome if you did. i mean i'm dying for that face to face between steve and and the rock well i i, I think steve is is very smart about this and i can't imagine he wants to be on the same show that the rock is i i, I it like Two years ago when he was in L.A. or Dallas, I'm sorry. And he like the rock wasn't on that show at all from what I remember. And so that's why Steve's like, OK, I, I'm on. I you know, you need me. You don't need Dwayne. They did 30 now, together. Didn't they do 30? Yeah, together? but that was kind of an open with all yeah. three of them and Hogan. And it, yeah, OK, because because it's WrestleMania 40, you're thinking maybe yeah. we get that. would be interesting. Uh, Is Hogan I, I, coming out for the save? Dude, did you see know. his promo? He cut a Yappa Pie uh, strap match promo uh, on uh, Twitter. I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> He did the whole thing with the belt, and he goes, the Yappa Pie strap match. You know, he did this whole entire thing, which was fantastic. Um, I, I see I see Austin for night two. Okay. Shenanigans. Uh, we'll get to night two, but whatever. whatever what, is, what, if he's, uh, what if he's a special guest referee? Love that. That would be amazing. Yeah. 
Um, I'm with you. This is hot. It's some of the best it's work hot. that they've done at the main event angle. Just not not just the angle, but the star power, like you said. Now, have did you watch this week for what I was talking about last week? And you know, Rock using his thigh to push up from the ground, using his thigh to oh, you did one of these. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I saw. I it. have bad knees. I know what yeah. I know what that is. Like that stuff kind of scares me a little. But bit. listen, he could just be being. He could be very careful. Yeah, you know, I I would do the same if I was a 53 year old at the at the size of him. God forbid I blow out something now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, standing yeah. up, you could blow, you could bro- blow something out, and you're done. You know, Roman almost had a bad slip. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. He slipped on um, when when they went to the outside, uh-huh. and, and Cody was going to do the rock bottom, or whatever he was going to do on on Dwayne. When you know how the they have the cover yeah. for the he he put his foot down and he slipped on oh, it, and I was like, I missed oh that. no, oh no, that would be a nightmare. Yeah, that would be bad. That would be. And look, Seth is the one who had the bum knee, and he's out there wrestling solo yeah. on the Monday before. Yeah. What? What do you think they do anything on SmackDown, or they just let this be the lasting memory going into the match? I mean, do they need to? SmackDown is technically the go home show, and they're all there. I, they're I mean, all maybe there. something, but I don't know what else they could do. You know, they could say that. Nick Aldis and and those guys decided that they cannot be in the building together because we want to make sure the match happens on Saturday. And then maybe you have them just cut old school backstage promos on each other. That would be cool. Love it. Okay, let's go to night two. So night two, Seth and Drew, I'm I'm in. I I, I think it's going to be interesting on what happens with Seth in this bloodline match. Yeah, but you know what? Um, You know what built me for that? Not Seth and Drew. Drew and Punk. Yes. <laughs> that's that's what built that like I'm into this match because of that 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 other feud that's happening here out of nowhere. Yes. Yes. I agree. Um yeah, that that has been tremendous. And Punk is gonna not be a referee. He's gonna be an announcer, a guest commentator. May, they might as well just bring Ariel Helwani to the table as well. Just get everyone on uh, on the announcing on uh, on that show, but yeah, that that's I think it's a tremendous thing. But I think how Seth does in the uh, tag match on night one will be interesting because you don't want him to look like an absolute jabroni in that match and then yeah. have to defend his title. Though, if he does get beat up a little bit, that could play into the finish of Drew winning. Yeah, I, and I think that's a nice way out. You know, this guy was hurt coming into this. He got wrapped into this crazy feud. Um, you know, uh, Cadillac Carson in the chat room. He, a great point, four ninety nine. Yeah, you think Damian Priest plays a role? I, that, I think that, that's that's a fantastic thing. point. Yeah, Ab- absolutely fantastic point that I didn't even really think about. Yeah, because Judgment Day is on night one, mm-hmm. so he could cash in on night two. I don't know, man. I don't know how you. I don't know how you do this with him because it's not like the, you know, three more months, four more months, and there's going to be another briefcase. Yeah. So you kind of got to figure this thing out. So I'm I'm more curious. Okay. So if it was Punk and him, right? Yeah. That would have been, that would have been the match. Yeah. It would have been Punk and, and uh, Rollins. Punk and Was Seth. Punk winning? Hmm. Because he would have main question. invented night one. It's a good question. Right. So would it have been Drew costing him? Would it have been someone cashing in? Does he win the title? And look at those optics. Yep. You know, there's, a, there's another guy... comment that maybe Punk would cost Seth the title so that he can face Drew for the title when he yeah. when he comes back. That's an interesting one as well. Yeah, I, I just um, I, one one thing about Drew or about uh, Damian Priest. I don't want to see him fail. But if he is going to fail, he should fail like a baby face and not like a heel. And what I mean is he should challenge Drew and not cash in at the end of a match where Drew is like woozy or something. He should literally challenge 
And you know, maybe it's at that, you know, I we, we already think it's going to be Punk and Drew if Punk is ready for that Clash at the Castle match. But let's say that Punk's not ready. Damian Priest and a cash in and they have a, just a great big man match. I think I think it'd be OK for him to lose that match, but I don't want him to lose like a goofball. And because uh, that just kind of kills any any momentum. I still think he's got to be turning babyface here sometime soon. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, that it's a hard one to book. What to do with Damian Priest is pretty hard. I hope something good. You know, he was on fire after Backlash last year, and they gave him that that briefcase, and he cooled off. And that that's like the curse of that stupid briefcase. <laughs> Someone gets really hot, you give them the briefcase, and then they cool off tremendously. The the Bad Bunny stuff with Priest was awesome. Yeah, that was. I my kids love it. Like my kids love bad bunny so we'll put that match on and then for my wife you know she's a proud puerto rican yeah italian puerto rican so she's like this is freaking great to watch and i do my terrible bad bunny impersonation <laughs> I go, oi, oi, and that's it and i'm done oh man all right uh eo sky and bailey I'll, I'll kick this one off because this is one of those things now i feel this way about a lot of aew stuff like Swerve Scott, like I thought Swerve Scott last year, you know, we're talking October, November, December was like on fire. Mm -hmm. And now here we are in April and he's about to get his title shot. And I don't think he's as hot as he was back then, because sometimes it's kind of hard to sustain. Right. And I feel the same thing about Bailey. I feel like the wrestling audience was ready for Bailey to turn on damage control about three weeks before she did. And then when she finally turned, they were like, okay, moving on, next thing. Because I don't feel almost anything for this match right now. I I did for a while. Uh, I, I, I felt it for a while. And then everything else took precedence, you know? And I think that's sometimes unfortunate. It's not, I don't think it was any of their fault. I, I think Bailey did great business in that beginning of that feud when she mm -hmm. started, you know, she was like, I know what you guys have been saying behind my back. Awesome. It just got lost. And I think they're going to have a great match. I, I, I'm i still very positive that it's going to be a fantastic match. I hope so. They they deserve it. She deserves it. But it, it's so hard because like, like you mentioned earlier, you're trying to get all these matches on this show. Everyone wants to be a part of this show. But sometimes like being a bigger match on the next show actually puts you in, in a little bit better position because the focus is on you. And plus post WrestleMania is kind of hard because you put everything into WrestleMania and then you go, okay, now, now we got to start all over again. So yeah, I, I hope so. I hope they actually create something out of this for, for yeah. Bailey to, to keep it, to keep it moving. So we got another super chat. If you want to, yeah, that let's now. do it. Rent yeah. optional has an answer to our question, at least as far as they are concerned. Rock and Roman win the tag match. Bloodline rules. Okay. Glass breaks. Austin yep. comes in for the save at the end of night two. Stuns Rock and Reigns, and Cody wins. Yeah, bring Co bring uh, bring Cena in too, you know? Cena will come in also and help. Uh, I, I, I think that would be... A, I'm, I would be thrilled. I would be thrilled. Because you're already adding the shenanigans, right? And again, goes back to what you were saying. Seth eats the pin. He's already banged up and destroyed for Drew. Drew is able to, and they'll probably do a quick match. I don't think they're going to go 25 minutes with Drew and Seth. You think you think it's going to be quick, huh? I think they could do, I mean, they don't have to, go, you have a way out of here to, to protect this guy that, that was banged up. You know, you, you have that opportunity. I would be fine. They do a quick match. He loses. Drew wins. He still says, you caught me on a bad night. You continue that program, and then now maybe it's a triple threat. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's the match. That's a triple threat. And you keep everybody healthy like that. Cadillac Carson also said, uh, bring in Big Rikishi. Oh, yeah. Stink face. <laughs> I want The Rock to do a stink face. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's move on. We have uh, the match you wanted to talk about, LA Knight against AJ Styles. Okay. I, I want to talk about this because I, I very much like LA Knight. I love his promos. I, I don't have this thing where people, you know, a lot of people find it negative that he sounds like The Rock and he sounds like he's doing pro wrestling. That's wrestling. People borrow. 
People change and the rock borrowed from someone else. It's an old school wrestling promo. This man looks at the camera and he starts yelling at you. Yeah. Which I love. He cooled off a little bit. I, I was eh about this angle. AJ mm -hmm. looks like a million bucks, first of all. He's so freaking jacked. So jacked. But what convinced what what sold me on this? I saw it on TikTok, okay? I love the body oh, cam. Wow, videos, there we go. There okay. We go. You know, uh, dude, I, I'm telling you, and and this is this is the mastery of WWE. This is what they do. When you're firing on all cylinders, you're really firing on all cylinders. They've tapped into a youthful demo. What they did, you know how Ellie and I got arrested two weeks ago? Yeah. Okay. I didn't see the arrest video, okay? I didn't see the, that footage. I missed it. I saw the body cam footage <laughs> on TikTok. So, again, it's 9 by 16, right? Because it's yep. vertical. Yep. And it looked like an actual, because I love those body cam videos. I sit there and I watch it. Oh, my entire train ride to Manhattan, 30 minutes, I'm watching body cam videos of fools <laughs> getting arrested. It's the best. The best. Especially if it's like a high-speed chase. <laughs> they, they, they filmed it. At, I, I thought it was real, dude. I watched this thing. And, I, and I'm like, look at these drunk idiots fighting on the lawn. And it has the <laughs> axiom, you know, like the body cam footage, like details on the corner uh -huh. with the date and the like the model of the body cam. I, they shot it on the actual body cam. It looked so real. It took me like a half a second too long to realize it was L.A. Knight and AJ <laughs> fighting. AJ was so convincing. They're fighting on the lawn. I thought they did. And I'm like, oh, my God. It caught me. It got me interested. I shared the video with people, right? I'm into this match now. Okay, I'm glad you are. You're not. Because <laughs> I'm <tell>. not. <laughs> I'm absolutely not interested. But it's Maybe not, you should have seen that body cam video. It's not the L.A. Knight side of things. It's the A.J. Styles side of things. I'm just out on A.J. personally. You, but you know what uh, the most sort of subtly funny thing that, that Dave does on uh, Wrestling Observer Radio? Is he'll he'll say like he'll say L.A. Knight's name, and then he'll just go, yeah, you know, and AJ Styles versus L.A. Knight, yeah, and then he'll just move on. But he he always says yeah after L.A. Knight. Yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah, subtle, yeah. subtle Dave humor thing that cracks me up. Um, I I like L.A. Knight way more now than I did before. I think he's hurt a little bit by just being overshadowed by a lot of the big stuff. But hell, like he's, you know, look at where he was five years ago, three years ago, two years ago yeah. versus where he is now. He worked himself up all the way to being in a, uh, you know, a decent, decently high uh, match on on WrestleMania. So good for him. I don't know. I think uh, AJ Styles may have gotten a memo that Vince was bringing back the WBF and he thought that was going to be the post uh wrestling career for him Listen, but that dude is jacked beyond you know anything. how old is he now he's in his mid 40s yeah you know a little trt goes a real long way <laughs> <It does. laughs> i'm speaking from experience <laughs> is that yeah. is that why you went you went uh sleeveless ready? today ready there you go hold on oh i can't do it i can't do it <laughs> there you, you know go. you know what this is just push-ups every morning 50 push-ups that's it hey man see if i was to do that my elbows are, are so jacked it, it's it's not i'll, I'll, I'll squeeze you gotta you gotta put some wd-40 on them dude i have el i have like the the tight elbow braces for when i lift weights oh and man i know i'm I know like the feeling I'm, I'm i i have this uh ice sleeve for my elbow as well just to whenever i because i know See, i'm like okay. my knees my knees are well dead. i have both because i have arthritis in in both of my knees and so I have the ice up for the knees, the ice for the elbows. It's it's getting old, man. It's it's not great. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's finish up the WrestleMania stuff, and we will do. We'll, we'll probably stay a little extra for those watching live yeah. to talk about CM Punk, um, Logan Paul, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. I, I it's cold to me. Oh, Very cold. Okay. okay, good, good. I'm glad you said that because when it was Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens, or Logan Paul versus Randy Orton. I was kind of into it. Me too. And then they yep. made it a three way. And I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> why does it have to be a three way? That's I why. I, that's, I, so I'm, yeah, I'm definitely lukewarm on it. I, I'm, I am. AJ is going to be 47 in a couple months. Woo. 
food doggy. Dude looks like a million bucks. Whatever he's doing, you should do do it and keep it up and do more of it. Yeah, I want man. him to get gigantic. Like, as long like, as he's doing it safe, then all good. No, no. I want him going old school. <laughs> I want no. AJ Styles, old five foot ten. Uh, I want him to be two hundred and seventy five pounds. I have no neck. Putzky. You want him to look like Ivan Putzky. <laughs> Ivan, Ivan Putzky, yeah. Like I used to think like when I was watching those old WWE videos, I was like, I wonder if somebody pokes him, he just explodes like a balloon. Like he just blow like he just pops. AJ's so turning tight. into Rusev. <laughs> oh my god. Mini Rusev. Yeah. Imagine if imagine if they had the tag team. Oh AJ and god. Rusev together. Oh my god. That, so now that it. I would be into that. I would definitely yeah. do that. Um all right. Uh, we'll skip the uh, we'll skip some of this other stuff. Uh and then it's Roman and Cody, and I I'm sure yeah. you're into that one. Of course, yeah. I, I I is it am I wrong? Okay. Am I wrong that I want to see Cody lose? <laughs> Just to see what happens. That's hilarious. Because you know he's at 1307, right? And Hogan is like 1400 he just needs like another 120 days to beat hogan's record the internet may die the pro the wrestling, will die. Pro wrestling yeah. twitter may and, just I, and die. i like the anarchy sometimes like you, listen it, it it has to be cody's moment because he will not never say never but man how do you come back from that right if you lose this yeah the, he <laughs> and the we longest, said that last longest year. story to ever finish man Dude, last year we sat down, we did this show, and I remember both of us saying, if he doesn't win, the momentum will get sucked right out of it, and it's going to hurt everybody. Yeah, we were wrong. And, and you know, we were wrong. I, and listen, of course we were wrong, because who, you know, we're pre-programmed to think a certain way when it comes to wrestling. We mm -hmm. all are, especially if you follow it, and you follow the pattern, and you kind of had these expectations. Him not winning really... You know, it's funny because when my son went to him, he's like, he's like, my dad said you're going to win the title. At, you know, uh, when I saw him at the garden, he gave like a, you know, face to my son because <laughs> he was like so hyped that he's going to win. Um, I, I, He has to win this one. I think so. I mean, I, I don't know how. I, I'm sure it's going to be some crazy ending to protect everybody and everybody looks good. Austin comes in, messes with The Rock. Maybe The Rock bumps into Roman and costs him. Maybe the whole plan was to cost them. I, I mean, I, I actually, I think we're we're out of that. Um, we got to go backwards. I, I don't think, I don't think Roman, The Rock being on, you know, the plan was to cost Roman the title. I don't think that's going to cut it now after the beating that they put on Cody. Yeah, right. It's it's ridiculous. Yes. But uh, listen, there's there's. Things have been done, and these guys are very creative, and and the story has been intriguing. Um, I, I'm I'm really curious. Without you know, and I don't even want to know. I want to experience it and 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 see what happens. But I'm really curious how they do this. But Cody needs to win. Uh, Randy in our chat. Roman needs 164 days to beat the record. Yep. So. I mean that would uh, that would what get us through six more months. So we're talking about October. So we're talking about September, Netflix time, or no, no, not net, not no Netflix. September. September. Okay. No, we're talking about when they're off. Raw's off TV, and we have no idea where they're going. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what happens. Is he goes all the way until then, and then they have a, a fake tournament, like like how when Pat Patterson won the Intercontinental championship in uh in in rio de janeiro rio, which didn't rio happen so maybe the rock loses it in rio de janeiro in in, in the dark time <laughs> uh, this, this was my favorite uh, i'm just gonna throw this up really yeah. quickly though cody is gonna get powdered in the eyes and hogan's mm. gonna run into the ring and challenge roman and win um, the crap, brother. he's gonna do one of these he's gonna tell hogan <laughs> do one of these remember that yes yeah those, those good where's ones. jimmy hart um all right, let's move on to the CM Punk thing. We, you know, we won't spend yeah. too much time on it, but I'm fascinated. Uh, like, because I was entertained. Like, I had, I, you know, crazy mixed feelings because I was super entertained because he's such a good promo, and that's what I, that's how, sort of how I saw the interview. Ariel is more TV show host than journalist on that show, and Punk was like cutting a pro wrestling promo with his version of half truths and. Yeah. I sort of feel like he's in an echo chamber that, where he doesn't really get any real feedback and he just kind of 
keeps people around that tell him what he wants to hear so he doesn't you know so that he can deal with it emotionally that's kind of what it sounded like to me Hawani, that wwe propagandist well, okay, I, I will say I'm, the, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, no. here's, here's I, the, I, I one, the one thing. Fantastic. Ariel's great. The one thing I had a problem with, though, when he made that remark, and he what did he call Dave? Like a five star goof or something like yeah. that. Dave, I don't know how much Dave helped Ariel in the beginning, um, but Dave has always given credit to ariel wait it was it was ariel that called him a five-star goof no, no, no. Not... it was, it was punk. punk yeah 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 ariel needed to say something at that moment to be like hey, okay, listen and, and and we all know I, I mean listen you know as well as i do how many of those guys okay that have buried dave kissed his ass for all those years constantly called him for tips wanting to be in the observer Asking if he watched the match, asking if, and I'm not saying that Punk did this, right? I, I don't know. I, you, you know what? Punk has called Dave many times. Okay. Many Dave, times. Did you hear Wrestling Observer Radio today? I did. I did. So, Dave said on the air that CM Punk reached out to him because he needed the lay of the land on the television ratings because he didn't really follow that. And that was not really his job when he was in WWF, I'm assuming. So he, he yeah. needed a little education on it. So he did reach out to Dave. So I'm so happy that Dave mentioned that because, you know, he I, I guess he doesn't consider Punk a source because Punk wasn't giving him information. So you don't want to alienate your source. And it was just Punk reaching out for help, I assume. And yeah. Dave was going to help him because Dave has helped countless number of wrestlers with stuff like this, so much so that Back in the day, uh, he and The Rock used to constantly talk business, like like I've mentioned before. So that part, I was happy that Dave mentioned that. And Brian also mentioning some of the lies and where Punk was wrong. I, they they I, could stick up for themselves, but ultimately, yeah. that, that they were not the biggest part of that story. It was Tony Khan and CM Punk and, and Jack Perry. Yeah, and uh, listen, I, I don't... I. I I, I'm just going based on information that I know. I'm sure there's so much more that I don't know and will never know. And I'm sure Dave knows stuff that I don't know. It, it, everybody talked when this happened. Dave never, and, and I could say this from knowing, Dave never put out information for anybody in that sense. The way that Punk is alluding to, right? That's not what he does. But Punk does have a lot of key points that I've heard complaints from a lot of people there. You know, it's it's a it was an experiment that failed and it only failed because you didn't have the structure in place to make it not not work. Mm -hmm. I think now they've learned their lesson. That's why they're they're rebuilding their entire C uh, level of executives. Now you have you know, uh, multiple executives on that level. Tony's not the guy making all the final dis I mean, obviously he makes the final decision, but he's not the guy deciding a lot of these things. Um, you need other fall guys and not Tony. And, you know, what did he say? Tony doesn't want to make money. He's a nice guy. He's not a business guy. Tony yeah, he said actually he's not running a business. He's not running a business. Okay. So then what is he running? His philosophy is different than than Punk's, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's very in line, and and Punk is just annoyed. Listen, I, I the way that Punk put it out that story, it makes you very. If you don't know what how it happened and when it happened, it makes Punk look like such a baby face. That's because his, that's what he's trying to do, and, and and he did a great job at that, and he did a tremendous job at that. But he does have a lot of key points. Why are you breaking this car? It's unnecessary. Fine. But why did well, my question here is, was he given some sort of authority over the talent and the TV show when he came back? Like, was it was he told, like, no, this is your TV. You're running it your way, because if that's the case, then he is in the right. I think I think he was. But here's my question. That's about crazy. His, though. his version that's crazy. Of, the, of his version of the car story. Right. He didn't really care about the car and the rental place because Tony could cut those guys a check if Tony wanted to destroy the car. And I'm, I'm assuming that's what he was going to do. Right. Yeah. So that was not the story. 
he was more bothered that you know they they wanted to do this thing that he didn't think was right and in his own way he was looking out for jack and that was the thing and it was and i'm sure based on how the end result was i'm sure the conversation wasn't as happy go lucky as yeah. he described it right because he went from happy go lucky discussion to jack perry doing something on tv to get back at him to then choking jack perry like the the levels of you know <laughs> where 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 are the where are the 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 gaps <laughs> like where, where are we filling the gaps here on this so i i don't believe that that was the the only story but yeah. so well shivani asked him to get involved you know i again you 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 the what the reason why all this happened is because you didn't have the key people in place you had this man right already punk came in uh, the last time people saw him before coming back was that he turned into a fucking werewolf at that scrum <laughs> and went berserk like a lunatic. Uh, and you know which, what? Which Again, would not... be blamed on Brian and Dave, by the way. He blamed which that he bl whole thing I escalated know. on Brian and Dave. And I know for sure that where Dave got that information from was not the Young Bucks. Like, I, I mean, I know that for sure. because I, I know that for a fact also. I know that me. totally for a fact. I mean, it happened, it wasn't... he told me. So, hmm, yeah, I, I listen, I, did he feel again? I don't I was not there. I cannot tell anybody if he was justified in his thoughts. I don't know. I'm sure to him he was. And I'm sure there is a lot of truth behind what he is saying. I have less of a problem by with what he did and how he did it. My bigger problem is how do you how do you not have the how do you allow this to continue? Right. As a company. And how do you release this man knowing that he's already gone to WWE? How do you release him with a not with no non compete? You handed you you brought him back, you elevated him, you put him on a pedestal as this, and he buried your entire company essentially. I mean, he made everybody look like a fool there. He beat up your top talent in the back or whatever happened. He fought with them, and then he went on TV and he said what he said. He brought his own title belt diminishing yours while you have this young up and coming guy with that belt. He no longer was the key focus. And what do you do? You let him go scot-free and he goes to your competition during the hottest period in the last two decades. That was a huge mistake. And I, and I, I'm not, I'm again, no blame. I'm not pointing a finger to Tony here. I think he just, he was in a bad position and he had to make a decision. Uh, and I, 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 I'm not one of these people that points a finger because I know how difficult dealing with wild horses is. And that's what wrestlers are. They're all wild horses. You can't control the way that it's not, it's not a nine to five. These guys are maniacs. You have to be. And I say that with, with tremendous respect. You have to think differently in order to do this for a career. It, it's not all just play fighting like people think. The, this is a painful uh, tumultuous mentally straining industry and i think tony found out the hard way on how insane things could get you know you know i, I i've said this and, and i'm sorry gary i've said this all uh, over and over again on how ridiculous it is that you have millionaires fighting like this but they're not normal millionaires these are uh, you know, uh, wired differently, men and women. These are different people, and they don't think on a corporate level to that extent. They, it's a very different well, type of thought process. The the um, a lot of times when I talk to people about wrestling, and they get holier than thou about the business on me, I have to remind them the business is based on a lie and a con. Yeah. Yeah, that is the business that you are dealing with. Two cons, two cons now. Oh, right. different con, different yeah, con. Okay. Exactly, exactly. No, you're right. That that says it so well. That's the whole key to it. It's deception. It's the whole thing is deception. And you know what? I I I'm not going to say to wrestler. Um. This, you know, you know what? I'll say it this way. That Jake Roberts moment, okay, in uh in Beyond the Mat, right, where he talks about. 
did you did we discuss this last mm-hmm. week? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I think. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, right? You become you identify as that character because you have to. I mean, in the old days, you had to live it, right? But now you have to identify as that person because you want to be the best at that as possible because that's how you make your money. You can't just turn it off. I, I, I mean, some do, but the best don't. You know, CM Punk is on that doing that interview with Ari, Ariel Hawani, which is one of the best interviewers for mm-hmm. MMA or, you know, in, in any of this. Uh, trem- he's unbelievable. And he's he's doing it in like one shot. Like he's not. It's not a produced interview where it's like, yeah, cut, take. Like he's doing it. And Ariel is so fantastic at being able to get those questions out in the timing that he does. He's so good, and he does great research. But for Punk to sit there for two hours, and you know what? He's an effing character. He's he is selling something to you. He's telling you a story. He's telling you that AEW is uh, it's not a viable business. So, hey, WBD, you guys would be fools to resign them to a mega deal because it's not viable. It's it. They want to put on great matches, but that's not going to make you money. And that's not going to draw a gate. That's what he's telling you. And he's in character. He's selling whatever he's selling. And listen, at the end of the day, he's a company man, right? That's what you do. Yep. Who's paying your check? You go out there and, and listen, never say never about anything. A lot of people thought that he would never go there. Uh, now he's going on TV and he's talking about how crappy AEW is and how great WWE is. I mean, at the end of the day, you you, you do that for who pays you. Yeah, he's a front runner, but at the same time, he's on the correct team right now. And you know, the one thing I wanted to go back, a lot of the problems in pro wrestling happen because a company is riding high and they fail to see that some of the reason why they're riding high is not necessarily because of what they're doing. It's just because they got hot. And so when you see problems or the possibility of problems, you kind of just go, eh, we're hot. It's fine. We're moving in the right direction. Yeah. And then when you realize that you don't have the, uh, like you said, the organization or the structure in place for, for the fail safe and then things do happen like this because aew was riding high i mean we we were at the show in which i thought they were at their hottest when adam cole and brian danielson show up at all in yeah or i'm sorry all out and you and i are there just going like wow this this thing feels really really hot this is like the best live show we've ever been to but if at that moment tony khan was like okay we're doing fantastically but let's put some of this structure in place because we want to stay this hot and i'm not saying that he didn't do any of that at all we're just looking at it from the side that we can see and it just looks like that is not what what he did then maybe some of this stuff doesn't happen but it's the same thing that happened to wcw you can go back into those observers and uh, figure four newsletters and read brian and dave going like you know they need to make new stars because the the stars that they have and they keep going back to the well these guys are not doing well and, and they're really uh making the younger or making all the rest of the wrestlers look terrible so who's going to be left when these guys are are gone and so you know that's why the critics are there right they're writing about this stuff now let let's put the structure and everything in place and just hope for Tony Khan's sake, that you could catch fire again. I'm not saying that they can't. They probably will. Listen, it's it's this is how it is, you know. Uh, there's ebbs and flows to wrestling. WWE cools off. Other things get hot. Uh, it's just almost, it's nearly impossible to, and, and again, I'm not saying that AEW's in trouble in any capacity because cable viewership, uh, they're, num- they're always number three at least. Uh, for Dynamite, uh, Collision, I think they were like number 20-something. But there's there's a lot of reasons for that with Collision. You know, he overextended. That's a possibility, too. We saw what happened with Eric when they added Thunder. Uh, and I don't know if Eric was as strong of a of a business guy or as as Tony. I don't know because Tony's still in his first couple of years. I think Tony's a better booker for sure. His wrestling knowledge is tremendous. You cool off, you get hot, but you need to create stars, like you said. And that's what they're attempting to do right now. Mm-hmm. And they have Will Ospreay and they have Swerve. Uh, 
MJF when he comes back and Kenny when he comes back. You know, they, they could create a nice top tier of talent. Uh, but a lot of the things that they've tried, it's not like the edge, the, the, the Adam Copeland stuff, right? That key, that started off cold and it shouldn't have. Mercedes Monet. I, I mean, I thought, I thought her debut looked good. She looked fine. She was fine. They put her on commentary and she didn't look great. I think it exposed her last week on commentary. So you, you're, they're still learning these things. They're still trying things. I, this is not a WCW moment for them. I, 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 and I say that, and I'm, and I'm very honest. I'm very even about this stuff. I don't pick a side when it comes to wrestling. It's stupid. I find it really stupid when people turn around. They're like, this one sucks, this one. Listen, it's not for you. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. AW is not for you, and that's great because you have other options. Same thing for WWE. AWW is not for you. You could watch something else, and that's unbelievable. But you got to recognize when things are bad and things are good. You have to be honest. You can't, you can't just pick a side. And I think right now, AEW, not as hot as they were. Uh, they're still okay. But they're not where they were two years ago. Yeah, and I think the one thing I would like to know if I was a fly on the wall in some of these AEW meetings is we know that Tony spent a lot of money on Osprey, Monet, and Okada. Oh, I and forgot Okada's there, yeah. And so, that that's a bad thing, by the way. I know. That you already I know. Forgot Isn't that crazy? Okada. I named you your top tier. I didn't mention <laughs> Okada. Yeah. But I would love to know what he thinks of the return on investment so far. Now, these are three year, five year, whatever it is. So we're, we're, we're like, you know, immediate gratification world right now. But I, I would imagine he's probably a little disappointed, at least in the TV ratings for some of this stuff and, you know, in the movement, uh, the business movement that they have been unable to do, especially coming off that high of the, but who the Sting believed, retirement. Let me, I'll ask you this. Who honestly believed that Mercedes, right? And again, no knock at her. Mercedes would have the same interest level that CM Punk did Nobody. on his debut, right? I, I asked Dave this on the, the, the day that they announced this big business show. We did Wrestling Observer Radio, or maybe it was that week. And I said, Dave, Mercedes Monet is not known in Boston like CM Punk is known in Chicago. You, you cannot run this same playbook. And his answer was, it worked the first time. That's why they're doing it. So there, that's your answer. Now, the hope is, is that you learn from that, right? And you go, okay, we can't do that anymore unless we have a CM Punk-like person coming back then maybe you run that playbook again but now you're not you can't run that playbook again because it, 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 you've shown that it's not going to work the second time in that way yeah so look that that's that's the whole thing of it is learning from your mistakes and i always say this with you know just about everything it's like you have to think about it like an experiment like you're running this this hypothesis essentially you don't know in the pro wrestling world you don't know exactly how it's gonna work right but now you have data and you learn and you move on and you adjust and now, you know, and that kind of thing. So, but I would like to know, like, I wonder if he is disappointed in the return so far because well, it has, I think it, it should have done a little bit of a better job of setting the wrestling ecosystem on fire, but also the timing of it. it we're in WrestleMania season and it didn't even really blip on the radar uh, based on what WWE compared to what WWE yeah. is doing. So maybe the timing was off. If this is in the summer when, you know, when we're not as hot with WrestleMania season, then maybe it does work a little bit better. I don't know. I don't know if it's the WrestleMania season. I, I think she's a great get for them for sure. Mercedes, but I, I love her. I think she's you know, fantastic. return on investment. I don't know. Again, that number that was flying around about what they paid her. I, that is not accurate. I, I know that for a fact, but you know, Punk had a built-in merch already, right? He had the built-in merch. He had a, they had immediate interest level. You wanted to see what he's going to do. You wanted to see what he was going to say. You were able to make so much money with that guy. A, because for seven years he was not on TV, and the way that he left WWE and the level of star that he was in the era that he was in. Also, the money that you were able to make and generate from merch. That, that one shirt, he's had that shirt for like 20 years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Um, all right. I, I know we, we stayed a little bit longer here, but I wanted to, yeah. to get through the punk stuff. What I want to say is, you know, you and I get to do this and we don't have to produce because our super producer is usually here. Yeah. The, there's one trick that I have, which is usually I have something to drink while I'm doing this because my throat goes dry. And uh, pr producer John sort of knows exactly when I need to get the sip because once I need to go grab the drink, he immediately changes the camera to yeah, you by fantastic. himself. Like, yeah, the, like that stuff. And so I'm here thinking about, okay, I need to take this drink, but I don't have the producer to cut. The, so I'm yeah, like, just take I have, the drink. as I'm taking the drink. But I wanted to ask you if you've had this before, oh, what which is, is bitters and soda. It, you know, we're into the mocktail thing. Yeah. And so it's a brand called Hella, which makes yes. me believe it's the Bay Area. I have that right? in my fridge. I have that in my fridge right now. Yes, I love yeah. this stuff. Bitters it's great and soda. stuff. It's awesome. You know what I've gotten into? The uh, the Ashkawanda drinks. Yes, yes. The hop water. I yep. love, hop, I love water. hop water. Hop water. There's is another awesome. one that's magnesium. Oh, I'm gonna have to find it. What is it? Uh, it's a magnesium. Uh, whatever, whatever. Uh, I gotta find the name. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. I'll, I'll tell you. Well, we'll, we'll continue showing off. No, it, I'll, but... I'll, I'm I'm about to yeah. shut it down. So I'll give okay. all my thanks and stuff while okay. you look for it. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So basically what I was going to say is because I'm kind of quasi producing this at the same time, I loved reading through all the comments. So thanks to everybody who joined in, in the live chat and who was watching live. Really appreciate you. Even the folks who I was kind of having a little fun with. I, I'm i just sort of teasing in there because there's some a little bit of negativity. But, uh, hey, we got your eyeballs and, and that's what's important. So appreciate you as well. Uh, and And yeah, and we'll be back hopefully next week with Cameron Hawkins, who is really going to be, you know, just doing so much WrestleMania weekend. So I can't wait to hear his stories yeah. for next week if we bring him on. So, uh, so yeah, did you find the drink? Yeah, it's called Recess. Oh, yes, we have those too. My wife yeah, gets Yeah, they're those. great. They're awesome. Yeah, I love all that stuff. Uh, as long as it's, like, not too sugary. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. This, like, very little, just like a seltzer with a hint. Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, so yeah, so we'll be we'll be back next week. I am gonna I am gonna probably be off the following week. So just an FYI, um, spring break for the kids, and we're gonna be traveling. So um, I probably won't be able to do that show. But we'll be back next week. Post Mania may have to take a week off, and then uh, just giving folks a heads up. Yes. All right, for Andrew Zarian, I am Double G. We will see you when we see you. Peace out. <laughs>